Well, Deborah, thank you so much for the the grand tour of Glen Glen Farkless. Um, but are we in the tasting room? Is this what this is? We are very much so. So yeah. we refer to this as the ship's room. Okay. And um, there's a lot of history in the room yeah. we're sitting in right here. So our visitor center opened back in 1973. Now, what you've got to think is people didn't really care about single malt whiskey that far back. So it was really quite right. an unusual thing. We were the second one yep. um, to open. But um, John's father, who was George Grant, as I mentioned before, he very much wanted to open a visitor center here. Mm -hmm. Now, he then heard about this amazing wood paneling, and he said, that's perfect for my tasting room now. So the wood paneling in here comes from the Empress of Australia, picture on the wall behind us here. Okay. Um, the Empress of Australia sailed primarily in the 20s and the 30s as one of the luxury ocean liners of its time. And she was then commandeered to be a troop ship during World War II, mm -hmm. did a few more years in service after that, and was decommissioned in 1952-1953. And at that time, they looked around and they said, what can we actually salvage from this amazing ship? And one of the things that was still in perfect condition was the wood panelling of the first-class smoker's lounge. So that's where we're sitting right now. Um, for the first maybe 15, 18 years after decommissioning, the wood paneling was in the Royal British Legion in the south, just near Edinburgh. And, and that's was, similar to our VFW in, in America, right? Yeah, okay. Exactly. For veterans. Yes, for veterans, yeah. and service people, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's a nice social place. It's more yeah. a bar than anything else. Yeah. Um, so it was in there, and then that was being changed, completely restructured. And so they decided to get rid of the wood paneling, and yeah. John's father heard about it. So he built this room this tasting room around the panelling. So yeah. to my right here, the shape of the room is like a ship. Right. So that's why we call this the ship's room. And then I'm not sure if the cameras are picking up the amazing ceiling, but the ceiling also is an exact replica of the ceiling on the ship. So on the um, on the ship, the, the ceiling was designed by an Italian company. Yeah. And a bit of digging after seeing a picture yeah. led us to the Italian company. They came along with the original plans, yeah. but also the original molds. So all the plaster work here was made using the same molds as the plaster work on the ship. The chandeliers are replicas, however. And then yeah. the soft furnishings are, are, are Mrs. Grant. All right. And Grant Tartan even on the floor. It's, it's a really lovely space. And one of the things I'm really enjoying about our setting right now is that I don't know if it's coming on the cameras or whatnot, but there's activity around us, yes. right? This is truly a visitor center. Mm -hmm. Things are happening all around us. Um, just a testament to the the popularity and the hospitality of uh, Glen Parkless. Yes, and I have yeah. to say we do pride ourselves on that hospitality. Yeah, much, so. it really comes through. Uh, everybody's been lovely um, and with no hierarchy involved, but even the chairman was spotted yes. as we were walking around. <laughs> lunch break, yeah. Yes, absolutely. But, um, well, at the end of it all, the product of Glen Parkless is the whiskey. Absolutely. Yeah, so is it okay if we try a glass? We should have a couple, right? So, yes. Um, just to really make you unhappy, the first whiskey we're going for is one you cannot get in the US. Oh. In fact, all three of them are. But this is, <laughs> this is a core age bottling, which is not available in the US. Now, there are strange historic reasons why. This is one of the most popular whiskeys we make, 15 years old, and it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. Now, when we started exporting to the US, the feeling was that 46% at the higher tax bracket, people wouldn't like that. So they didn't want it. So instead we created our 17 year old for the US market. So, so I have 17 a 17 at is, home. It's a lovely business, yes. it's quite different to this. This is more sherry. So I mentioned in the warehouse that we use the cask up to four times. Yes. We, we do a, a, a manage of those casks to get the character and profile we want. Right. This one has a slightly higher first blush sherry content right. than the 17. All right, so 46 ABV, 46 ABV. sort of an amber color, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if you can see, but I'm picking up the legs are, are coming down the sides of the glass. It's always a favorite here on Try Before We Die is yes. to pay attention to the legs. But it's good legs or not. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right, um, um, do you mind if I nose this? Okay. Mmm, so uh, the, the sherry's really coming through, yeah. yeah. This is a favorite of a lot of people that work here. Right. And so 15 years on this campus in a barrel, 
in a stone warehouse, in a dunnage warehouse, right, in a sherry bot. Or a hogshead. Or a hogshead, yeah. right. And am I correct that there's an arrangement between Glenn Farkless and Jerez Spain with yes. a bodega? Yes, Jose right. Miguel Martin yeah. is the bodega. And John's yeah. been going there for one thirty years. To right. And that's fantastic. Probably a, a handshake deal. I mean, very few of our deals are anything more than a handshake. Yeah. There are some countries where, by law, contracts are required yeah. for distribution rights and that kind of thing. But some of our longest serving distribution partnerships yeah. are very much over a handshake. Um, the market we first sent whiskey to was France. And we've been with yeah. the same distributor there for 49 years. And that was a handshake. So I get to go to Bordeaux to visit them quite regularly. Which again, is one of life's real hardships. Yeah, right. <laughs> we uh, oh, just to Bordeaux. <laughs> I mean, if nobody else, I guess I'll go. My right. friends just think it's hilarious. I think my favorite one recently, um, I was traveling for work and I hadn't even told my yeah. friend that I was away. We were just messaging yeah. and she sent me a message going, where are you? Yeah. So I sent her a photo of yeah. the Hollywood sign. Right. <laughs> and she was like, you're joking. No, it's just where I am today. Well, you know, interestingly enough, and I'm about to taste this and I'm picking up on some malt in here yeah. as well. Um, is that uh, my wife is along on this journey with us too. And so we told our youngest son we were in Scotland uh, three days after we got here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, we let him know on a Monday, so that way he was less likely to have a get-together at the bitter end over the weekend. I mean, I have to say I did the same thing when I was younger. Yeah. How yes. I? And he's done it before, so we've learned <laughs> our lesson. <laughs> well, you've got good whiskey. Yeah. Yes, yes, but yes. when I was a teenager, having this park, I didn't. <laughs> no, there was, they, they were spoken to very sternly by their dad at one point. If you ever help yourself, to avoid trouble, don't add water to the bottle. Just take your medicine. <laughs> or yeah. it's going to go, yeah. go, um, yep. go fighty. Yep. It's All right. So we've got some malt. We've got some amber and clear sherry influence. I'm going to give a taste. Oh, my gosh. It's got wonderful mouthfeel. It's, there's a, a nice, relaxed, oily entrance. And it, and it rolls back very smoothly, not terribly spicy, um, very relaxed in its warming, right? It just sort of spreads around. It's, it's not rough at all. It's delightful, right? I can see why it's a, it's a favorite um, here for the staff. Um, again, though, because of the, uh, the American bias, feeling like the 17-year-old would be more attractive to the higher tax bracket? Well, no, the, the sentiment is in the lower tax bracket because it's bottled at 43%. Oh. So that's what that keeps it in the lower tax bracket. I do feel in 2024, there's no reason why we can't introduce this. Right. The, the knowledge is there now, mm -hmm. but when we started this, you know, we're talking kind of 25 years ago, the knowledge wasn't there as to why that one had more tax than that one. I was thinking tax as in income, people wanting to spend more for uh, a higher yeah, age no, statement. Let's the fact that the ABV was higher. And okay. So it, had a higher duty rate on it. Okay, okay. So to leave the country was more. And to arrive in the US, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we're a funny country. I mean, I'm not going to say anything bad, but you do have a complicated alcohol system. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> true. It has to deal, deal with it from the same. Well, and state by state is yes. is different too, right? I actually had an inquiry yesterday from someone yeah. from Texas asking if we could ship bottles, which I'd say I don't know. I need to go digging. Right. Know? But some states are quite easy. Some states are so complicated that it doesn't make any sense for sure. Yeah, we're from New Hampshire, and generally speaking, we can't ship spirits okay, to New so Hampshire. You're one, of, you're one of the hard ones, okay? Yes. But you have friends in easier ones. We have friends in easier <laughs> ones. You know, again, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> Those are a couple of our addresses. I like yes, it. yes. Honestly, that's totally fine. <laughs> now, mm. just one, again, little quirk of Glen Parkless. Um, the difference in the bottles here. So in the U.S., you'll only recognize this one. Right. We don't ship any of the clear glass to the U.S. How come? Um, very simply, the 750 bottle. We don't own the mold for clear glass in 750. Okay. So a decision was taken when the bottle went to the shape, are we going to do both? And they said, well, actually, the cost of the bottle mold is huge. It's only for one country. We're just going to do only the dark one from the US. But for the rest of the world, anything up to 12 years old comes in clear glass and 15 yeah. years old and older is in dark glass. Right. 
And again, the 750 is the American standard. Exactly. It does seem like it's beginning to shift a little at times, but the 700 is the European standard. Standard and Asia and everywhere right. else. The rest of the world. The rest of the world, basically. Right. South Africa is the only other one which takes 750. Okay. So we've been having chats recently, are we going to change to 700 from the US? The answer is no, not for core range, but we are going to start to introduce some of our special bottlings, mm -hmm. which before you simply didn't get. Right. So if it's a choice of, is it a special edition, you can have it at 700 right. or you can not have it at all. Which do you right. choose? And the Fisky fans tend to have no problem with taking right. 700 in those circumstances. Okay. Because I have at the bitter end, we've reviewed the 10 and the 12. Mm -hmm. our Randy, our number generator, has given us the 10 and the 12. And there is a 17 and a 25 yes. on the shelf. But seeing that we're here, I think there are other options to Absolutely. try. Yes. So I've, I've, I've taken a, a couple of single paths over. Um, just for fun, I've gone for a younger one and an older one, okay. but also quite different cast styles. So the younger one is a 2010, but it's a first full sherry butt. It was bottled in 2020, so it's actually really quite young. It's only nine years old because I say only nine. Because we're <laughs> at other distilleries would love yep. a nine. Um, but this one is a 2010 um, bottled in 2020 before its birthday it's 60.4 percent abv and it is a first full sherry butt so um 625 bottles out of that one yep so a single cask single cask absolutely high abv high sherry high sherry First fill. First fill, yeah. Right, and that's so, that big barrel from when we were in the exactly, warehouse, right? I was going to say 500, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, the casks that we're using, obviously we're using it up to four times as we've mentioned already, but when it comes to single casks, we will tell you on the label if it's first fill, second fill, okay. or fourth fourth fill. So if it says sherry butt or sherry hogshead, then it's first fill. If it says refill sherry butt, refill sherry hogshead, it's mm -hmm. second fill. Mm -hmm. If it says refill butt but without the word sherry or yeah. refill hogshead it's third fill and if it's fourth fill we'll tell you it's fourth fill or we might have written plain in the past but plain yeah. confused people because they thought that meant it had never had anything else in it before it has to have sherry in it it's just not really influenced by it because yeah. we're on the fourth time right the so it. now it's more about the wood than what was held exactly. before yeah. right or it's picking up the previous whiskey not the original sherry exactly what I, what I love about the legs here is that there is this real wash of a leg, which is consistent with that higher ABV, yes. right? Um, it's it's lovely. And again, Glenn Farkless, all natural color, yes. never E150A. Certainly not a single cast. Right. Mean, not any time ever. But, but, right. Yeah. People do foolish things sometimes, though. Some, it oh, it really surprises really, me. But it's 60%. The easy way to tell is by just how long that almost oh, lasts. Oh, right. So younger and um, less strong biscuits that disappear. Right. I, I've seen away. that trick on moonshine yeah. as well, right? Right off the still. So it's like a, you know, like a beer. It's not yeah. really like a beer. <laughs> um, right. But the way it has that kind of head on it almost. All right. All right. Oh, the classic sherry right there, right? I mean, really, really noticeable. Sometimes we'll make the comment of a little sulfur note, right? Um, and again, never in the negative sense, always in just like, much, yeah. right, just in, just in like that very recognizable, well, we're into some sherry. Now, Glenn Farkless, um, Oloroso, PX, Oloroso. Oloroso. Or the new stuff anyway. Yeah, okay. So, yes, there are other things. Um, yeah. I mentioned the other house that John's dad bought a few other things for fun, so there right. are a few other cast types, but also the really old ones, we don't necessarily know their full history. Yeah. So the cast from oh, the right. people weren't really interested in right. they just knew it was a sherry cast. Um, but yeah. nowadays, obviously, it's all very traceable and everything else. A Christmas cake? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Inc I'm, incredibly sweet. I, yeah. I told you um, off camera that my previous life, I lived in Switzerland. Yeah. Now, my favorite thing in the world is whiskey and chocolate together. Mm -hmm. and this goes really well with chocolate. It, it is. It is. It's delightful. All right. Do you mind if I have a, a taste? Yes. I would love to be joining you, but as you know, the alcohol drink driving laws are pretty strict here in Scotland. Right. As opposed to even in England, right? It's I mean, or right. In Scotland and England, it yeah. is stricter, right? Which is which is really great in terms of public safety, but it does make it, you know restrictive to even have a taste especially when you live up here right. <laughs> or work up here because it right. is a little bit remote right. Right. We're, we're, we are just off a main road but we are you know 10 minutes from the closest right. time right For, forgive me deborah 
<clears throat> a main road um, in Scotland, which uh, is a is a single car. Uh, it's one way out, right? <laughs> it's a single car. Come on, you can't offer a single car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in the sense that the one that comes past us here yeah. is maintained by the national government, not the yeah. local government. Okay. And if you actually watch that road, yeah. the, the volume of heavy traffic yeah. that uses it is quite yeah. high because there are so many distilleries around here, right? We're oh, in yes. the heart of Speyside. Yeah. So, um, as I, as you already know, Highland single malt Scotch whiskey, but it is a Speyside. Yeah. <laughs> Every. Every um, space side can call itself Highlands, right. not the other way around. Right, and right. Have, all space sides are Highlands, but not all Highlands are space sides. Exactly. Yes. Right. And our bottlings predate the change in the rules, which yeah. made space side a region in its own right. Yeah. So, not these exact bottles, but us bottling our mm -hmm. brand predates that. Yeah. So, we already had Highland on yeah. our labels before yeah. they officially did space side its own region. Okay. So, John said, Well, I'm not changing their la our labels just because they changed their rules. So <laughs> you can't make me. You can't make me. Yep. So we stick with Highland it, for it, that reason. Um, and yeah, we're very, but we are very much hard to space yeah. idea. So there's all these tankers, malt bodies, yeah. that kind of thing going yeah. down these roads. And I, and I tease about the lanes, right? The roads, but they are narrow. Um, and it and it does seem that and vehicles. The other side of the road. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, um, but we get used to it quick. It's enjoyable. Um, so I've already had a taste and it is very viscous, very oily, very meaty, right? There's a lot happening here. Oh, it, it, I mean, the nose is, is just so welcoming. Um, and so Glenn Farkless, never any peat? You have to go really old to get peat. Okay. So when they stopped malting here in the very early 1970s, they stopped using peat at all. So... Up until that time, when they malted on site, they would use a tiny little bit from Benrinus because it is a peat-covered hill, um, definitely a hill if you're from New Hampshire. I was joking, if I've, got, if I've got European guests, I say if you're Belgian, it's a mountain, if you're Swiss, it's a hill. Right. Um, yeah. So yes, very much peat there. And the peat was minor, so always yeah. just a minor, minor thing. We never right. went really down yeah. to peat route because it's Speyside, and yeah. Speyside traditionally doesn't. So um, I'm just wondering if we can take a quick break before yeah. we do this last one Absolutely. so I can clean my palate just a little bit. Get your glass of water. And, um, and we'll come back for what I'm, I'm very excited about. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and again, for the generosity. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a quick break. Perfect. Thank you. So we're back in the tasting room here with uh, with with Deborah. Palates cleansed. Palates cleansed with Deborah. Get to the really good stuff. Right, but I just want to quickly take a note, Deborah, that um, off camera you brought out this this jug of new spirit. So this is what it looks like coming out after second distillation exactly. before going in the yeah. barrel. Right, this is barrel ready. Right, 100%. and so so Deborah gave us a, a glass to nose and taste of this and this is about 63 and a half exactly that yeah. right ABV going in the barrel and so you ensure all your spirit is 63 and a half going into the barrel so with minor exception occasional exceptions so we yeah. do occasionally do so we call 63.5 filling strength yeah we also but we what comes straight from the still is called receiver strength okay and the receiver strength we'll do a couple of fillings a year at receiver strength just to give us a few higher strength tasks. Awesome. I mean, it, it's such an interesting nose. Those of you who've had moonshine before, this, you know, at that 80, 90% ABV, this is so different on the nose. I wish you could have it. I picked up something in terms of um, a mustard leaf or something on the nose. It was just very malty, very strong, but not alcohol but also yeah, exactly that this is the danger you you think it's going to be such a burn and it's not yeah it was so unique it wasn't what i was expecting so we've got the the new make right the the barrel ready we've got the 15 year old we've got the 2010 nine year old yes. but i oh the bottles have grown on both I ends of the you line had, oh, you had a little break yes yes so um so where are we going next so for the contrast we're going to go for a fourth fill so because the 2010 was quite a young first fill, this is quite an old fourth fill. Okay. So it's a 1977, bottled in 2017, so it's a 40-year-old, maybe 39. It's a high cast number, it's a late um, bottling date in the year, so it could be either. It's from a hog's head, so it's the smaller cast type, the 250 litre. And by the time they got around to bottling this, it was down to, just it's not a lot left, so it's down to 45.3% ABV. 
meaning you only, uh, 182 bottles filled. And so it wasn't cut down. That's the salt. that's the ABV straight from the cask. It naturally fall into it. So it probably went in at 63.5 and it's down at 45.3 after 39, 40 years. Right. It's just so interesting. And so the color is the well, color yeah, difference, right? Right. And like, golden. Right. To, to not be fooled by color and don't let that guide your experience. Just let it yeah. be a part of your experience. It Very golden. Really you instantly think that's the older one. Right. Right. This is a, a medium gold for me, right? Knocking on the door of a rich gold. Yes. Yes. Wow. And so 45.3 ABV, 1977, a 39 to a 40 year old. Yeah. Family cask, family cask, which means it's a single cask. It is a single cask. The family casks are always single casks. Yeah. Um, and it's a range of single casks that we've been producing since 2007. When we first launched in 2007, you could buy every year from 1952 all the way up to 1994. Malcolm, we're going to need your wallet. <laughs> right? Absolutely. <laughs> but you can't get 52 or 53 anymore, but you can still get 54. Um, yeah. And every year we add the next right. vintage. So this room we're sitting in is where we host the first, choose the first 2008 vintage, 2009 vintage. So every year we're adding the next one. So we do that during the Fisky Festival. We allow members of the public to choose the cask we'll choose as the first 2009 vintage. Mm. Um, so we sit in this room with about 30 guests. We give them six different samples and we make them vote on what one is their favorite. Yeah. And the one that comes out highest in the scores is the one with the bottle. But we only do it with the youngest vintage. Otherwise it's our choice. Right. True engagement of the consumer, right? Absolutely. That's, that's fantastic. Just and we the... cheat a little bit because we don't put anything down we don't like. Right. <laughs> Any of these will be fine. Exactly. Which one would you like? Exactly. Yes. That, yes. Right. I'm gonna... But it's always interesting too. So yeah. quite often we'll do like um, sister casks. So two numbers of casks that were yeah. filled on the same day that yeah. matured side by side. They're yeah. never the same. No. Similar, but not the same. Right. So we might have like three pairs of two sister casks. Right. I'm going to nose this. Please do. Oh, I'm very excited. Wow. And so would this also be a, a fourth fill sherry? Yes, but a hogshead. Right. Yeah. right, but a hogshead. And really, we're going to pick up a lot related to this whiskey based on the previous whiskeys in the barrel. And the nice oak, the, the good quality right, the wood. Yeah. Far less uh, influence from the original sherry. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, which is related to its lighter color. Absolutely. Right. It's, it's lighter on the nose, right? It's coming in very fragrant. Absolutely. Fragrant is a really good word to describe these yeah. fourth fill, the older ones. Yeah. Some of my actual favorite of the are yeah. this kind of age, the fourth fill cast. Right. They really have like right. an intensity, but a lightness. It's a, right. it's a really interesting balance. Right. If I didn't know, I would imagine this was a bourbon cask based on the color. Just good oak, you know, so right. which is basically what right. we do bourbon casks for. Not that we do, but the Scottish whiskey industry. Wow. All right. I'm going to have a taste of this. Thank you. All right. This will be the oldest Glen Farkless I've ever had. We're so lucky here that we actually have these whiskeys available that we can actually just crack open and have a little taste of <laughs> on occasion. I'd put a couple words before lucky. <laughs> but they were polite ones, I hope. Yes, yes. <laughs> Very polite words. Extremely right. Yeah. Magnificently fortunate. <laughs> it's unbelievable how relaxed this whiskey is. It's not too oaky it's yeah. not too woody right given the amount of time it's spent in the barrel and what we find i mean maybe this isn't scientific i'm definitely not a chemist you know um those casts from the 50s that we looked at in the warehouse mm -hmm. have actually been like i have to try both of those mm -hmm. they don't taste ah, it's a tough life yeah <laughs> <laughs> someone's got to do it they don't taste particularly woody and you right. expect them to because they are 70 69 60 years yeah. old when i was trying them the I personally think that it's something to do with the direct fire. The, the meteor spirit that the direct fire gives us holds up well. The shape of the ages. still, too. The shape of the still, all that yeah. kind of thing. So it's not an overly light spirit, which would right. then get overwhelmed by the wood. Right. It holds its own against the wood. It, it is so fragrant. It is so on, on the palate. And it's such a strange thing, I'm going to say, given that 
sherry cask originally. Um, it's it's very dried grass, right? It's not a yeah. it's not a green grass. It's not a wet it's not a wet hay. You know, I, I grew up in the countryside myself. <laughs> you know, you know well. right? You know, uh, throwing hay bales as 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 a child, right, on the neighboring farms. There's something very dry about this. As someone who grew up more in the fishing side of things, because yeah. we're not that far from the sea, yeah. we're like 30 miles from the sea here. That's what I grew up with, so I'm, yeah. I'm not so familiar with those smells. Yeah. And luckily you don't smell the fishing smells in these, otherwise you are really <laughs> disturbed. <laughs> not, not be quite so pleasant. Right, we, we, we need to be in another region to Absolutely. have that maritime influence. You never see anything bad about anyone else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, we spend our time just about what's working, right? Yeah. And so far everything's working. Uh, that's just amazing given the age the original casking the fact that the wood's been used three times before and it's not coming through it hasn't fallen off it's fragrant and it's got that really dried hay to it um and at 45.3 i really love that you can just drink that it's really yes dangerous now the interesting one the last one which i just went digging and found so this one is 48 years old so it's a little older again but we're back into first of all sherry so looking at color we're back into something much darker and it's from a sherry but so the quantity of bottles is higher and the strength is mm -hmm. higher so we still managed to get 487 bottles yeah. from but at 48 years old and 50.6 percent abd and this is from 1966 that's for you kevin white i mean i know that you have a, a your your english Colleague that you Malcolm. Malcolm. So we could mention this was the last time that England won anything. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm. I hope that hurt. <laughs> so yeah, it's not that we not that we like to joke about these things because Scotland are mediocre at everything, but hey, we have fun with it. <laughs> well, you're not mediocre in a whiskey production. Absolutely not. Yes, that's so confident. Sport wise, we've got yeah. a few a few exceptions to that. <laughs> Um, but, having just seen the retirement of Andy Murray, more or less, you know, mm -hmm. our greatest sportsman. Um, uh, it's it's just Deborah. It's just like again a testament to the generosity of Glenn Farkless that in my hand is a 1966 Glenn Farkless, um, a 48 year old. 48, yes, yeah, so it was bottled late 2014. A 48 year old single malt Scotch whiskey, first fill. Sherry butt, Oloroso yeah. sherry butt, maybe possibly. Oh, the and records become a little, little a dodgy, right? Then, yeah. yeah. And to go back to what we were talking about before, you might get a very small amount of peat on this because this is potentially when they were still malting here, right? When they were doing the floor maltings, exactly, yeah. right? Right, and the fires would be set below, absolutely. With right. a little bit of peat from the hill, not the primary source, but. They put a little, a little bit of the and it, would it be the would it be the the worker with the raskin the hand cut yeah 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 um, it's just like but it's not a maritime peat obviously because we are thirty miles from the sea here so right maybe more more of a, an earthy kind of thing. yeah there's a I'm I'm holding some gold in my hand everyone here it's today like right but there is <laughs> there is gold and we're in a a, a a deeper amber right but. This is um, this is a one-off experience, right? Um, again, so 1966, 48 years old, uh, first Phil Oloroso. We're unsure of the firing method, and there may be a little bit of peat. I haven't nosed it yet. For sure, a little bit, but how much would it depend on the batch? Right, right. People ask, why did we stop malting old barley? Well, malting companies can do a better job mm -hmm. more consistently for less money. Yep. So it right. doesn't actually make any kind of commercial sense yep. to malt yourselves. Um, and as I say, you know, the decision goes way back to the early 1970s. So you do have to kind of go back into the archives to get stuff. From right, to find the reasoning. Occasionally get the tiniest hints of peat from some yep. of our other whiskeys, um, which are not as old as that. Because yep. if the cask was first filled on a particularly peaty batch, then that will then carry through the mm -hmm. cask to the right into the wood the second fill the yes fill. right right almost as if it were a seasoned cask yes, exactly. yes. Uh, abv again 50.6 50. 50. right we've got the on the legs right just the 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 beading across the top with almost no space between them other than as the drops form it's a lovely 
a Scottish mountain range across my glass. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You were the Kieran Gorms yesterday, right? Yes, we were. Yeah, yeah but Glen Chee. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I, I am now uh, going to nose this precious 1966 Glen Parkless. Wow. A leather book. Yes. Quite uh, often with these right. ones, you get things like the kind of the, almost like the humidor idea. Right, a deep tobacco yeah. leaf. It, it does have the wood influence, but it's a nice wood influence. Yeah. It's not like just oak or like that kind of mahogany kind of thing you get sometimes. Really right, it, it really is. I wish I wasn't dry. <laughs> it really, it really noses. Oh, mature. Yeah. It's got a very mature nose. Um, super pleasant, very exciting to me to sort of really pick up on the leather and the tobacco. It's lovely. I might like to spend like an hour not drinking it just so that I could have an hour drinking it. But try before we die. The wow. 66, right, Solange. And this is for you, Kevin White, who's uh, born in 1966. Ah. I'm born in 1969. Malcolm Ooh. was born in 1967. And, and that made him think one day at a, an event that that meant him he was the youngest. And that if he was wrong, he would buy dinner. And so he declared that 66 meant he was younger than people born in 67 and 69. Turns okay. out he was wrong, and forever, 66 means something. I, mean, I, I chose the right cast for that case. You <laughs> absolutely did. All right, here we go. Oh, Spot on. Absolutely. There is the peat in there. Yeah. The influence is there. It is a 30% a contributor, but what I am drinking is a library. I am in the leather chair with the wooden globe. That one. Yes, <laughs> right, with the paneling behind me. And um, it almost uh, deserves to be taken for that. Piece. Right, uh, agreeing that. This young man can marry my daughter, right? <laughs> there is something so mature about this. this yeah, oh, mature. yes, yes, you certainly. Well, I guess, yes. Um, it, it's, again, it's, it's nice to have, and thank you so much for the generosity of bringing out this 66 to allow us to have this experience of this peated Glenfarclas, which is not the regular right at all these yeah. days right it's it's a wonderful deviation from the norm and yet at the same time it's an exceptional dram and representative of Glen Farkless as well through the taste uh characteristics the profiles it's still a Glen Farkless right but it has this little 30 percent my number 30 percent influence of the peat wow and what I love, right? And, you know, um, we've had a, a, a 1966, and forgive me for this, Deborah, Glenn Grant, but they brought it down to 40%, right? Okay. That, you, that you've, you've made a decision internally to allow a little bit more complexity to, to maintain in this dram. This is. Their styles are quite different to ours. So oh, yeah. The, style the, spirit the spirit, is quite right. This, the spirit, but the fact that you've chosen not to grab quantity of no. bottles by bringing ABV down. I mean, these are, the idea with the family cast is each release is different. So this one is a spring 15. Yeah. So we're doing a release once, occasionally twice a year. Yeah. So then, you know, this 66 will not be the same as a 66 from a different release. That's fine. No, they're not supposed to be. Yeah. Family cast has never really been a thing we've done for the US just because of the complications mm -hmm. of the different rules of different states and the small quantity of bottles. Yeah. Um, but it's a shame because they are phenomenal and the family casks, they do go across the world. So you will find them in all sorts of wonderful places right. in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, yeah. all over Europe, here in the UK, just it, even Canada, in fact. Some of the liquor boards do take some family casks. They might only give them like three or four mm -hmm. vintages a year, otherwise it gets too complicated. Right. But 
it's I could I think you and I could just like talk for like the rest of the afternoon and then we'd find a cab and, and, <laughs> and you would join me. Um, but I think it's time to start to, to wrap up this conversation um, here at Glen Farkless, right, right there from the new make spirit barrel ready. What's the phrase? If it's ready for the barrel delivery ready. <laughs> just about. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then all the way to this 48 year old with the hint of Pete, proof of a different time of whiskey making here on this farm. I think kind of world has changed. Yeah. Since that was distilled. It, it's just been a, a fantastic experience here at Glen Farkless today. And Deborah, I can't thank you much uh, enough. Absolute pleasure. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. With a bearded man and a British guy.